Shalom, Shalom. Call Halayum Le Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shah, Bahashem Rakak Wadash. And double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, better known as GMS, who rule well. Peace and salutations unto the hopeful elect, the tabernacle of David, beginning with the 144,000 and the rest of the men, women, and children whom Yahweh Bashem El will have mercy upon. I'm your brother Matizabath, and I just wanted to do a quick land back response uh, to the beloved. Uh, brother St. Benji from GMS Chicago Subscribe so that you guys may be edified um, I was listening, you know, to this lesson that uh, St. Benji put out And as you can see on the screen um, It was basically a video going into a brother um, I'm guessing that he was with the brethren, the group Up there in GMS Chicago And um, basically he sent a message And as you see on it as you see here on the screen, um, I'll just read it really quickly. But it says, uh, Shalom Elder, I got to battle alone with this. I will always love the brotherhood. Y'all are the true men of the Lord, but I got to do this on my own. I love all y'all brothers. I wasn't ready to come back. I knew I should have wait. Just be battling a lot. Just something I got to deal on my own. And then he went on to post Philippians 2 and 12, right, which you know that's a basic precept we should all know um the the thing that and let me just say this um to you you know to you you know guys that are you know just coming in or you've been in and you kind of up and down lukewarm or whatever the case may be look man just do us a favor and like you know saint biggie said just leave okay just leave. This is you're not cut out for it. Um, basically, this proves to me without a shadow of a doubt that first and foremost, he never was rooted in the faith. All right. He never was rooted in the faith. And so when you talk about you got to do this on your own, you just got a lot of things that you got to battle. The scriptures first says what? Let's get to rock two, verse one, my son. If thou come to serve the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, prepare thy soul for temptation. We all going through shit in our lives, man. Okay, whether it be personal, whether it be at our own house, whether it be at the job, okay, of um anybody who you associate yourself with, whatever the case may be, we all got shit going on in our lives, man. This is an easy fucking cop out. Easy fucking cop out, man. Verse two, it says, set thy heart, meaning your mind, all right, and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. See, you're hasting to get away from the brotherhood because you got to deal with it uh, by yourself, man. OK, but what does the Bible say about that? Let's get the book of Galatians chapter six real quick. And verse two. Right. And I'm going to start at the top. It says, brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such and one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. You supposed to be around the brotherhood, man. That's the whole purpose of the Akim that are around you to restore you back to where you need to be, man. Not you sitting up here. All right. Putting in your, your your leave. All right. Putting in your papers saying, you know, I'm a bounce because I, I, I got a lot of stuff going on. Nigga, we all got shit going on, man. But here's the main point. Verse two, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Hamashiach. Did you hear that? You're supposed to bear ye one another's uh, burdens. If you would have came to the uh, elders, you know, and, and got counsel, which what does the scripture say about that? Let's get Ecclesiastes 3. And actually, no, Ecclesiastes 6, I believe. Salakia. Ecclesiastes 6 and 6, it says, be in peace with many, nevertheless, have but one counselor of a thousand. When you are amongst the brotherhood, man, whatever you got going on with you, bro, 
That's what the brotherhood is there for. To exhort you back in the faith. Not for you to 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 seek an easy cop out and say, well, you know, I, I got a lot going on, so I'm going to have to bounce. But y'all, y'all the true man of the Lord, though, I, you know, but but I got to do this thing on my own, bro. That's not what Philippians 2 and 12 is all about. It's not essentially saying when it talks about work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's not in the sense of saying that you just got to rock solo. That's not what that's going into. Right. Let's get another one. Luke. Luke chapter nine. All right. And let me see here. Luke chapter nine and verse. Bear with me. I had it before. He that turneth his back on the plow is not fit for the kingdom, man. Point blank, period. Yep. Luke 9 and 62. It says, And Yahweh Shah said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of the Most High. So, you're not fit to be that, you know, like St. Benji said, man, just leave, bro. This this is not for you. If you turn in, if you turn in your back on the plow, all right, because you got that much shit going on. And then let's say you're going back into the world, then you're not fit for the uh, kingdom of the most high. Because the scripture says he that endureth until the end. Let's grab that. This is Matthew 24. All right. In verse 13, it says, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved, man. Does not the scripture says fight the good fight of faith? First Timothy six and 12 fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life whereunto thou art also called. And has professed a good profession before many witnesses, bro. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Fight the good fight of faith. That's weak, man. You sitting up there talking about some, you know, I'm just battling a lot. Just something I got to deal with on my own. Nah, man, that's weak. That's a sign of weakness. And here's the proof. You faint hearted as the scripture says. Sirach chapter two. Okay, verse 12, woe be to the fearful hearts and faint hands in the center that goeth two ways. Woe unto him that is faint hearted, for he believeth not, therefore shall he not be defended. But here's the point, verse 14, woe unto you that have lost patience. And what will ye do when the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh shall visit you? What you gonna do? When Jacob's trouble is fully amplified, I don't want a brother that's going to be in this type of spirit around me, man. Straight up. If you tripping off the fact of, you know, uh, matter of fact, let, let's grab that in the Apocrypha. Let's that Sirach 40. <laughs> Sirach 40 and 1. Great travail is created for every man and a heavy yoke is upon the sons of Adam from the day that they go out of their mother's womb to the day that they return to the mother of all things. Their imagination of things to come in the day of death trouble their thoughts and cause fear of heart. Man, you know, I'm just going through a lot. There's so much going on. From him that sitteth on a throne of glory unto him that is humbled in earth and ashes. So it don't matter what your status here uh, on earth, right? It says, from him that weareth purple in a crown unto him that is clothed with a linen frock. Wrath and envy, trouble and unquietness, fear of death, anger and strife in the time of rest upon his bed. Um, his night sleep do change his knowledge. Oh, you know, I just got to I just got to go because it's just a lot that I'm going through. Right. Right. So you allowing that to creep in and to change your knowledge of the truth. You've once uh, you've once tasted 
the, the goodly knowledge of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. We'll get that in Peter after this, Lord's will. Verse six, a little or nothing is his rest. And afterward, he is in his sleep as in a day of keeping watch, troubled in the vision of his heart as if he were escaped out of a battle. When all is safe, he awaketh and marveleth that the fear was nothing. Verse eight, such things happen unto all flesh. You ain't the only one, both man and beast. And that is sevenfold more upon the sinners, man. So how much more, what do you think your how about Shemiel Shai is going to do to you by you leaving, man? How much more? Now let's grab that in Peter. Let me see if I can find it first. Uh, let me see. Was it second? Uh, no, nah, what's the second Peter? Yep. Um, let's start here at verse 18. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. And while they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, because you've once tasted this goodly knowledge by escaping the pollutions of this world, man. Those demons that you're fighting right now in your uh, mental capacity and your thoughts, to say the least, okay? Much of that can be uh, uh, dealt with through uh, prayer and fasting, man, being amongst the brotherhood. The brothers could have prayed over you in Numbers, the sixth chapter. Lord's will, we'll grab that after this. this uh, but read and on verse 20, it says, for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, they are again entangled therein and overcome, and the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. And that's exactly what you've done. You've turned from the holy commandment, man. That's why the scripture says many are called, but only few are chosen. Verse 22, but... It has happened unto them, according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again. And the soul that was washed to her wallowing in the mire, man. Now, let's get that numbers, the sixth chapter real quick, and then I'm going to close it out on Romans, the eighth chapter. Number six, I'm going to start at verse 22. And the Lord Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, Yahweh bless thee and keep thee. Yahweh make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. Yahweh lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. You could have had this uh, prayer prayed over you amongst the brethren man this is one of our uh, go-to prayers man when we bless the uh you know certain uh, brothers within the brotherhood <laughs> man hey let this be a lesson to the rest of you brothers out here man all right you sitting up here taking the easy way out this is uh we'll close out with this this is romans chapter 8 and verse 18 all right Matter of fact, we'll start at verse 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of the Most High and joint heirs with Hamashiach, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the things, or Salaki, let me read that again. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So, bro, that little shit that you dealing with, that little battle, whatever you talking about, that ain't got nothing to, that's that's not even on the same level in compare, uh, comparison to what we are about to receive in the kingdom, man. Straight up, bro. So, hey, like, like you know, like St. Benji said, bro, half at it, bro, just leave, man. All right? And let this be a warning to the rest of you jakes out there man that's coming in this foul ass spirit bro we don't want to be around brothers like this man 
The scripture says, gird up thy loins, man. Show ourselves to be men. That's all I got to say on that. Shalom. Lord's will. This was edifying.